Welcome back. Although I'm still new to the ColecoVision, this console really kicks the llama's ass. So I've spent a little bit more time with the console. I've had my ColecoVision Phoenix for about three months now. And thanks to the power of the internet, I think I've pretty much played every game. And it's no exaggeration either when I say my three and six year old daughters love it as well. On with the show and hopefully you'll like it. The Coleco love affair continues. So before we start this video, let's rewind. Eric Bromley, a talented designer, was the brainchild behind the Coleco vision. Originally though, Coleco was a leather company that eventually got into plastic toys. Based out of Connecticut, by the end of it, they were into toys, swimming pools, video games, consumer electronics, uh, the Coleco Telstar series, the Coleco uh, Adam computer, the Coleco Gemini, and believe it or not, they own the license for the Cabbage Patch Kids. From a video games perspective, it's as if they came out of nowhere, almost by accident. But the company entered the video game sector in 1976 with the Telstar, and allegedly uh, Coleco only broke even. But surprisingly, they continued to do well in the electronics sector. But for all intents and purposes, it's the Coleco version released in 1982 that we're interested in here. And on that, um, Damien McFerrin on the 18th of September 2010 did an article for Nintendo Life where he interviewed Bromley and it went on to say, I picked up a copy of the Wall Street Journal and saw an article about how the cost of RAM had declined. Bromley went on to explain, I retrieved the latest copy analysis and substituted the new pricing. It came very close to the target price point. I ran to inform Arnold Greenberg and burst into his office without even asking his secretary. Before he could react, I showed him the new figures. Ten minutes later, we were working on a new project with a working name, ColecoVision. It's a really good article from Nintendo Life and uh, yeah, check it out. I mean, listen, it's been discussed many times, but I think the key to the early success for the ColecoVision is largely squarely down to the packing cartridge, which was the adaptation of the arcade game, Donkey Kong. I'm learning more about the ColecoVision as I go along with it. And I'm not sure if this is true or not because it's only what I've read, but apparently it wasn't plain sailing to get the Donkey Kong license. Atari were also hot on the heels in regards to trying to win exclusivity for what then would have been considered the hottest arcade game since Pac-Man. Apparently it came down to a last minute Winston Churchill slash Braveheart speech. Quite a moving plea by all accounts. But it's apparently here where Bromley convinced Nintendo uh, president Yamauchi to grant ColecoVision initial rights before later releasing to Atari. An absolute game changer for ColecoVision this would have been and helped to fly thousands of consoles out of the shop doors. But then disaster struck, not just for ColecoVision, but for Nintendo as well. In 1982, lawsuits are filed against both Nintendo and Coleco by Universal Studios, who claim Donkey Kong and its various ports infringe on their King Kong movie copyright. Coleco panicked and cut a deal with Universal, giving them 3% of Donkey Kong sales, where Nintendo gave them the two-finger salute. I mean, you couldn't make this stuff up. Years earlier, in 1975, Universal had already argued that King Kong's copyright had already lapsed into the public domain. So the story goes it went all the way to the Supreme Court and Nintendo eventually won. And then after the win, Coleco eventually filed a suit and received a portion of their lost royalties. It's a fantastic story and I'd like to one day read a book about it. So after a year of development time, finally in 1982, the Coleco Vision is released. And unlike the Sony PlayStation launch years later, there wasn't a single game available to buy apart from the packing game Donkey Kong that came with the system. But by September, a bunch of games followed. Cosmic Avenger, Smurfs and Venture were released, followed a month later by Carnival, um, Ladybug and Zaxxon. But despite a lackluster launch, the console is an instant success. And by Christmas 1982, it already sold over half a million machines. And if that wasn't good enough, in the first quarter of 1983, 
Coleco reported that over 1 million consoles had been sold with over 8 million cartridge sales. And from what I've personally seen from the ColecoVision so far, this was a giant step towards capturing the graphics uh, and game mechanics of the original coin-up, finally for the home. And ColecoVision even tried to future-proof the console somewhat with the expansion module interface. But as they say, the rest is history. So with all that guerrilla warfare out the way, ColecoVision were now the king of Kong. But as we all know, it's all about the games. So on to the games. I thought I'd kick things off with Alcazar. This looks very similar to The Legend of Zelda. I've heard some people actually say that they prefer this over Zelda. And if I'm honest, the game does have a similar feel. Also, if you want to see the entirety of this game, you have to up the difficulty level. So basically, if you are going to play this game, just start on level 3. There's all sorts of objects, monsters, you name it in this game, in including giant flies. Thankfully, your gun can fire off 8 shots and kill any monster. A solid 8 out of 10. There's no doubt the ColecoVision has an impressive lineup of arcade games. My girls especially like this one. It starts off easy enough and, uh, well, you're basically racing uh, a penguin uh, on a slab of ice. It's cute and kids will love it. It's another ColecoVision game that stood the test of time. And there's definitely a challenge there and it can get quite difficult later on. I mean, this is really fantastic stuff and it plays as good as it looks. For me personally and because my kids like it, a solid 9 out of 10. I'm sure I've said it before, but this for me is definitely my kind of game. Against all odds, you can fire in nine different directions. The challenge is fantastic and the hand glider section massively switches things up a notch. You get one life, sparks will fly. This is one of the ColecoVision's finest. If I'm honest, the only thing missing is a continue option. But for me, the challenge, sometimes even the seemingly impossible, is the reason I personally love retro gaming. This one looks like a very basic uh, two-player game. And if I'm honest, the Commodore 64 version, graphically, uh, is probably the stronger game. There's three difficulty levels to choose from, but this is a mega classic. If you've ever played Scorched Earth on the PC, you can see how much Scorched Earth borrowed from this game. This would have been a perfect four-player game as well. It could have been amazing. You could have had weapon upgrades, a one-player option. As things stand, a 7 out of 10. Here we have a game on the ColecoVision that is genuinely funny, which is a rarity in any era. And I think it's one of those games that people are still playing and will play for years to come. My kids have had a go at it and they absolutely love it. With uh, great games like this, no wonder the ColecoVision sold over 2 million units. It's a terrific, easy to dip into sort of game. I guess for ColecoVision fans, uh, this is now considered part of the furniture and uh, will probably never be forgotten. For me, it's a solid 8 out of 10. This is a shoot 'em up based on the slimmest of material. It's practically identical to the Atari 2600 version, but for some unknown reason, I can't get enough of this. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best games on the ColecoVision. If you can imagine Space Invaders crossed with Juno, crossed with Tempest, then you're almost there. And once again, unless I'm mistaken, Activision massively struck gold with this one. For me, no doubt, 9 out of 10. In Blockade Runner, you're on a cruise ship to the stars. You're a bazillion miles away from home, in this case Earth, and you've got to find your way back. The faster you go, the quicker you get there. If you can imagine asteroids in 3D, but with a bigger ambition of scale. The game looks sufficiently colourful, everything zips along at pace, but what on earth is going on with that shirtless guy on the cover? This is Top Gun in space for the ColecoVision, and I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. I've played this on the Amstrad CPC originally, and it's a fantastic game, and I think there's about 5 or 6 in the series. 
Um, I've also played it on the Commodore 64, and I think that's the ever so slightly better version. But this is no slouch, and it's absolutely fantastic to play. Just playing this is a great little trip down memory lane for me. It's just awesome. I get totally lost in it. Nothing else in the world exists when I'm playing Boulder Dash. This one gets an 8 out of 10. Uh, who doesn't remember Buck Rogers in the 25th century? It ran for 33 episodes in the early 80s. I remember it was either this or Doctor Who on the other channel. I personally love this game. Uh, it offers deep space action with a similar formula to Space Harrier. And for me, that's difficult to resist. Unfortunately, the robot doesn't feature in this one and there's no biddy biddy biddy. And thank goodness Gary Coleman doesn't make an appearance. It's great watching your starfighter blast off into space. And I don't care what anyone thinks, this is a solid 8 out of 10. I was literally just talking to somebody today about retro gaming. And he said he wanted to get uh, an Xbox, the original one, so he could play all the old retro games on it. And I mentioned about uh, the Raspberry Pi and my Collector Vision Phoenix and how I can't wait to get home and play it. Naturally time permitting, which is a rarity these days. But it's because of games like this. Terrific stuff. Without question, uh, one of my favourites. Easily an 8 out of 10. I saw this in the arcade years ago, but I didn't appreciate it. I didn't give it the time of day that it deserved. So it's only now, after discovering the uh, ColecoVision and recently the ColecoVision Phoenix, that I've come to appreciate this game. And it's made me go back to the arcade original, which I would probably never have bothered with if it wasn't for the ColecoVision. And whilst it doesn't look as good, anywhere near as good as the arcade original, it plays just the same. Another solid 8 out of 10. A lot of these older uh, programs um, from yesteryear have made something of a resurgence on the platform YouTube. So both of my daughters, three and six, knew all about the Cabbage Pack Kids uh, before I even showed them this game. And they really like it. They didn't get far in it, but they giggled the whole way through. Graphically, uh, especially the sprites, I was really impressed. <clears throat> it's not one I'd play personally, but my two girls insisted it was a 9 out of 10. I started playing this and couldn't stop. There's no way whatsoever I'd have picked this up back in the day, just based on screenshots alone. Big mistake, as this is really addictive. Everyone can play it, the whole family can play it. My two girls absolutely love it. I personally can't stop playing it and on my pursuit to review anything ColecoVision, probably a hundred games in now, this is absolutely fantastic and the best of all the home conversions including the mighty Intellivision. A 9 out of 10. If you own a ColecoVision, don't sell it whatever you do. The gameplay in Centipede on the ColecoVision is so fast and fluid. And apparently, although it doesn't say it on the box anywhere, I've checked, the roller controller works in this game as well. So like with the uh, arcade, you get the trackball. Is it the best conversion? Mm, I'm not sure. The Atari 5200 probably has the edge, um, but I love this. A solid 8 out of 10. This is just one of those games where you can sit and play all day if you like without any pants on. It's your job to man a chopper, rescue the hostages, and fly them back to safety. All the while dodging and destroying dangerous enemy fire. If you haven't played this on the ColecoVision, everyone should own this. It's a fantastic little game. Also, I've been playing this with the kids and it's great fun. I can't really fault it, eight out of 10. Yeah, it does look a little dated, but it's still great fun. Whilst I'm mostly addicted to Zaxxon, the arcade conversion on, on the ColecoVision, I did spend a day or so playing this. And when the kids came home from school uh, a couple of days ago, 
They said, let's play Congo Bongo. Let's play Congo Bongo, Dad. I think, personally, everyone should try Congo Bongo. It's one of those forgotten gems. For me, a worthy 7 out of 10. Yeah, I think that's fair. Who doesn't love a great shooter? Especially a fairly addictive one. If you're a fan of Scramble or Defender, you'll absolutely love this. It's not one of those games that appears to push the ColecoVision in any way, shape or form. And the sound effects, whilst they do their job, um, aren't really anything to write home about. But when you consider that there's four levels of difficulty and a great challenge, this really is an excellent little space shooter. I had to think long and hard about scoring this one, but in the end, it's an 8 out of 10. I think we all know the plot to this one. Uh, fly um, a bomber over enemy territory and blow up the dams. If you love masses of detail in a game, and this is a rarity on the ColecoVision, then you can't beat the dam busters for simulation. What's also apparent, although everything happens at night, how smooth the game is. This one's a 9 out of 10 for me, but flight sims only. If you like jerking your joystick and some heated two-player races, then this one is still quite fun. These games are a little bit like Marmite. You either love them or hate them. As a teenage boy, I'd often play games of this sort. Daily Thompson's uh, Decathlon comes to mind and would quite often give the old joystick a good waggle. And uh, it's good exercise as well. Can't think of anything negative to say because it's well presented and the colours are great. A good strong 7 out of 10. There's not much I can say that hasn't already been said before, but the colourful graphics, fantastic. Uh, explosive sound effects. There's intense shooting action. It's probably one of the most difficult shooters uh, ever to grace a console. If I'd have owned this back in the day, um, this would have been a thing of worship. Not many people will have enjoyed this because of the difficulty, but they definitely would have respected it, and kudos to the ColecoVision. Without question, a masterpiece and 9 out of 10. This is still a great version, despite missing the cement factory stage, but this iconic 80s game easily demonstrates its graphical prowess over the Atari 2600. Despite being an early pack-in title, this is an essential game that you must own and play for the ColecoVision. Unfortunately, my kids find it way too difficult. They can only get about halfway up, but it's definitely one I think they'll come back to once their hand-eye coordination improves with age. For me, without question, a solid nine out of 10. In a weird turn of events, uh, Mario has kidnapped Donkey Kong, so it's up to his son, Donkey Kong Jr., to save the day. Naturally, nothing beats the arcade original or the 78, Atari 7800 version, but this is bloody close. It's just as challenging as the 7800 version, but overall, this is a solid conversion of the arcade original. It's missing a level, but a solid 8 out of 10. If you want a fun, simple racing car game, you can't look any further than the Dukes of Hazard. Also, of the one of five games that support the uh, ColecoVision steering wheel, this is the must-have. What surprised me about this game is the speed and the detail in the graphics, especially as you zoom through the town. Did this push the limits of the ColecoVision? I don't know because I don't know the console that well. But personally me, I love it and it's an 8 out of 10. If you wanted any more proof that the ColecoVision was ahead of its day, look no further than Fortune Builder. This is basically SimCity. It's a much better two-player game than it is a single-player experience. But I'll never be able to look at a SimCity game again without thinking about this before playing. The graphical UI for the time is incredible and there's a lot of complex problem solving. An incredible game, 9 out of 10. Now this is something super cool uh, I've just come across. 
Our main protagonist looks like half sausage, half firefighter, or fire extinguisher. It might be a simple game, but there's quite a bit of variety. There's two stages to every level and four levels of difficulty. I quite like the sound uh, and especially the graphics. And the other level will see you clambering up drain pipes, swinging from window to window. And it's just all round good, entertaining fun. An 8 out of 10. Anybody old enough to remember Berserk? Well, this is Frenzy, the sequel. Both of these games went on to influence Robotron 2084, um, Smash TV, and you could say Geometry Wars. You've basically got to traverse what feels like an endless amount of rooms, where the aim is simply to survive. It's not often a sequel plays better than the original, but the second game is definitely more fulfilling. Considering this is 1983, I've got to give this one a 9 out of 10. The attention to detail in this arcade conversion for the ColecoVision is absolutely amazing. As with the arcade, you get through the first couple of stages and then the difficulty starts to ramp up a little bit. Frogger has lost none of his charm on his conversion down from the arcade to the ColecoVision. I think the motorway section is slightly bigger, there's more cars on the arcade original, but my girls absolutely love this, they think it's fantastic. So I'm going to give this one um, 8 out of 10. Mad for it. This doesn't look great, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, but it plays an absolute blinder. If you can get used to the controls, the orca controls, it really does kick ass. This is a very well done port. Uh, considering the ColecoVision uh, limitations of Tato's 1982 arcade hit. And the action really takes off once you reach the tanks. So that's kind of why you need to stick with it. The trick is to keep moving, keep firing, which all adds up to non-stop pulse pounding action. An 8 out of 10. Galaxians is so famous, it featured as a game that you could play whilst Ridge Racer was loading on the PlayStation. Gone were the regimented formations of space invaders, now it was all out chaos. You'll need nerves of steel to make it through wave after wave of enemy unpredictable attack. This ColecoVision port to me seems, feels absolutely arcade perfect. I can't say for sure if it's my favourite shoot 'em up on the ColecoVision, but it's up there. This one gets a 9 out of 10. Despite the simple graphics, I really like this game. I like it a lot. There's lots to collect, including treasure. You can upgrade your weapons, which includes a longsword. There's a good combination of early RPG and action. And there's some that say that this is the godfather to the Diablo series. And the simplicity, including the graphics and sound, just work. There's no doubt in my mind, this is a classic and an eight out of 10. Well, simply put, this is a great arcade conversion. Especially to think that this came out in 1983. It does feel ahead of its time. And the oval shield protection is quite innovative at the time. And if like me, you'll just play this one over and over. In the words of Kevin Keegan, I love it. Unfortunately, the Galaxian level that you get in the arcade is missing. But it's a great little multi-part shooter. And I give this one an 8 out of 10. I could be wrong, but I think outside of the arcade, this is the best conversion I've seen. It feels extremely close to the arcade original. I can't personally think of anything bad to say about this game. It sucks you in, it's such a good shooter that hours will pass by and you'll wonder where the time has gone. This really has done the arcade original justice. It's a really highly entertaining game and I love the music as well. And if you're looking for a game where you can play it to death, this is the one you found it. A wonderful game, a great arcade feeling, a solid 8 out of 10. Rockstar Ate My Hamster from Codemasters is 10 times better, but I still enjoyed this in a weird sort of way. I loaded it up and was still playing it two hours later. I'm not sure if I can recommend it, but I quite liked it, I think it's good. 
Maybe this game has a bit of a cult following, I'm not sure. Or maybe there's people out there who just think it's rubbish. I've no idea what to rate this, so... Whew, uh, 7 out of 10. I'm not sure how many people will agree with me on this one, but this is probably one of the best games I've played on the ColecoVision. I actually prefer it to Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah, don't stone me to death. Plus it also reminds me of Chucky Egg that I used to play on the Amstrad CPC. Very similar type of play. The only downside, if there is to be one, are the graphics are very, very simple compared to those games I've mentioned. For me, a 9 out of 10, and well done, Epics. I've heard somebody describe this as complete garbage, uh, that looks like garbage as well, but really? I think it's quite good. There's quite a bit of strategy in this game, as you duck and dive and jump. I'm not aware of any other versions that this came out on, but uh, so I've got no basis for comparison. I quite enjoyed this. Everything zips along nicely, and uh, eventually, you catch the criminal. It's good fun, and I'll probably give this one mm, 7 out of 10. If you know your maze games, you'll know Ladybug should be top of your list. It's a Pac-Man derivative where the walls can be rotated, giving the player the illusion of more freedom of movement. A bit like the EU, this is a very clever twist on Pac-Man and an essential game. Well, one of the many reasons to own a ColecoVision. It's a fantastic challenge. The family and kids will love it. And it's great to play in the dark as well. A solid 9 out of 10 from me. The second I started up this game, I knew straight away I've played it before. So I originally played this in the arcade, but I had a game on the Amstrad CPC called The Island of Dr. Destructor. Although it didn't scroll, the plane moved in exactly the same way. This is an excellent translation, uh, arcade conversion for the ColecoVision. It's an aeroplane game where you can shoot, fly up, do the loop. For me, it's a fantastic little shooter, and I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Personally, if I enjoy a game, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I certainly don't care what the game critics think. All I know is I loaded this up, and I wasn't able to put it down. Uh, and that, for me, well, as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And <laughs> I couldn't get enough. The graphics aren't the best, the sprite movement isn't the smoothest, but it's got the gameplay, and sometimes I just like to come home, kick off my boots, and sink my teeth into something quick and dirty. Easily a 7 out of 10. At Micro Fun, the fun goes on forever. Along with Manic Miner and, you could argue, Pitfall, Miner 2049er opened up a floodgate for platforms to come. This is also one of the ultimate kids games and I've got proof my three and six year old love playing this. I also experienced uh, Bounty Bob Strikes Back. US Gold did the conversion to the Amstrad CPC and back in the day that was a lot of fun. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. I always felt lucky growing up in the late 70s, early 80s, just as the arcades were getting going. It's definitely the reason I'm here and the period that inspired me most. Back then I was mesmerised by the, the power of the arcade machines. The arcade hall I used to visit was an absolute shithole, but it was my shithole, you know. This is an edutainment game uh, at its best, from uh, originally from Konami, an arcade original. You can choose the types of math mathematic puzzles you want to solve, and it's fantastic for the kids. They will absolutely love it. It's an 8 out of 10 from me. Who would have ever dreamed that maths could be fun? If you like Mousetrap in the arcade, you'll love it on the ColecoVision. The more mazes you complete, the more points you get. And what do points make? Prizes. But not real prizes, that would be silly. It's fast paced and a near faultless, flawless uh, arcade conversion. And for the first time ever in video game history, when they marketed this game, they weren't lying. 
It really is just like the real arcade game. 9 out of 10. I think the closest I came to playing Mr. Do outside of the arcade was on the Amstrad CPC, a game called Fruity Frank. It was a really good clone of Mr. Do. And I'm not going to lie to you, it filled the gap. But it's nice to see that it made it to the ColecoVision. And from what I can tell so far, it's a license to thrill and to stay close, well as close as it can, to the arcade original. It looks and feels like it's been carefully crafted and it's yet another reason to collect the ColecoVision. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed this one whilst it lasted. It's a very smooth, solid shooter. You've got a good arsenal of weapons available to you. You can drop bombs, fire lasers. There's the obvious uh, similarities to Defender. There's rapid fire aplenty. And I really like the colorful uh, big sprites. Trying to hit targets on the ground can get uh, a bit frustrating. But I personally love these types of games. And for something that came out in 1983, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give this one a solid 7 out of 10. Slightly disappointing. There's no actual end to this game. You just keep going for the score. For me, this feels a little bit too similar to Asteroids. And it's also similar to a game I had on the Amstrad CPC years ago, uh, Thrust. Although I imagine the latter copied this. But I suppose if you like Asteroids and you like the arcade original of this, well, this captures it to a T. And this just goes to prove my point that sometimes the games don't look like the arcade, but they play exactly like them. A good old fashioned 7 out of 10. Oh, yes, I love this game. Pepper 2 is absolutely fantastic. Can't get enough of it. It borrows from lots of games that came before it, but somehow it does its own thing and it still feels original. If you love maze games, you'll love Pepper 2. I had a game back in the day on the Amstrad CPC called Oh Mummy, and you can quite clearly see where it got its ideas from. I can't put my finger on it, but this game is deeply satisfying. And in my personal opinion, Arcade Perfect, a 9 out of 10. I think I've said before, absolutely love this game. Loved it on the Commodore 64 and love this version as well. I think when it comes to racing games, I'll play any old tat, but I keep coming back to this one. Um, mad for it. The graphics and the road update aren't anything remarkable, but the pit stop is fantastic. Because of that, it mixes the arcade element with realism, and it works with my shiny new ColecoVision racing wheel. I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man, I live in a caravan. There's a hole in the middle where I do a piddle. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. See if I'd have played this back in the day, I'd have definitely uh, sung that. This is, um, it doesn't look like the arcade, but it plays like it, and that's the important vital ingredient. I had uh, a Popeye game, in fact, three Popeye games, one, two, and three, on the Amstrad CPC. And ooh, I can't remember if they were any good or not but I remember playing them for hours. If you like the arcade version, you'll love this. Eight out of 10. It's got a giant Cobra in it. It's got spaceships and it's based on DC characters I've never heard of. I'm not even sure if this is a finished game, if I'm honest. Um, I've heard some people say it's a prototype. So on that basis, I won't give it a review, but I really enjoyed it. Bringing down the Cobra is quite difficult. And sadly, I couldn't make it past level two. Essential game. Essential. I once dreamed of owning this on the Amstrad CPC, but it was not to be. When I first played this on the ColecoVision a few months ago, I fell in love with River Raid all over again. Words can't simply describe my love for this game. It's the best version outside of the arcade. Ramps up the difficulty a notch as well over the Atari 2600 version. You ColecoVision owners were lucky sods back in the day. 9 out of 10. It's quite a good game this, I quite like it. Uh, what's all the negativity about? There's a really good challenge here. I don't know, people are finicky buggers. These graphics for the time uh, look fantastic. High resolution as well. I was in Nottingham about a year ago, but I don't remember it looking like this. 
Although Brian Clough's face sometimes looked as red as a beetroot like that sun there, I jest he was an amazing footballer and an even better manager. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you like it or dislike it. I personally think it's really good. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. By the end of this game, you're going to eat lightning and crap thunder. But like any man, you need the right tools for the job. I'm talking about the Super Action Controller. Remember, go for the ribs, don't let the bastard breathe. You can play against the computer or against a friend. Graphically, and for the time, I'm just completely bowled over. The ColecoVision has managed to capture the excitement of pugilism. Let's not forget this is an 8-bit machine, and this came out in 1983 for Christ's sake. If only there was more to it. My kids love Smurf. It's a bit short and a bit easy for me, but honestly this is the perfect game for kids. Imagine Pac-Land, Wonder Boy and Pitfall all rolled into one and you've got Smurfs. It's a crying shame it doesn't scroll, a game like this really needs that. Once you get good at it you can complete it on pretty much any difficulty under 5 minutes. But like I say when my kids get home from school uh, they say can we put Smurf on please daddy. I've asked them to rate it and they said 8 out of 10. Back in the day, they would have had me with the word space. I'm a bit of a sucker for anything sci-fi, but especially so for games with spaceships in them. The intro to this uh, is unbelievable. And I love how it says, Warrior 1, get ready. Well, it doesn't say it, it just has text on the screen. But yeah, brilliant. It's a great single player game, a great two player game. It comes packed with four levels of difficulty. This is a tough game and one you'll need to put lots of practice in. Easily an 8 out of 10. I like it, I like it a lot. It's very difficult and uh, I like my space shooters, very difficult. It reminds me of classic invaders that I had for the Amstrad CPC. Not many people I know could get past level 4 or 5 on that. I got to level 6, but my cousin, she was able to get to level 8 or 9. This is a fantastic little game. It's just as difficult as Space Invaders on the later levels. And each time you play it, you get that little bit further. Easily an 8 out of 10. If you own the ColecoVision back in the day, goodness me, uh, this is a fantastic arcade port. Um, only ColecoVision owners will have realised back in the day that uh, the vastness of their games were arcade port superior to other consoles and computers. I've gone on record many times in saying I wish I'd have owned a ColecoVision back in the day as a kid. This one easily, I would say, a 9 out of 10. Truly amazing arcade conversion, this. Yeah, um, I think I played this one in the arcade. Uh, it's a very, very interesting game. And when I played it, I think, back in the arcade, in the 80s, I was addicted to it. I thought it was really, really good. This ColecoVision version, quite basic by today's standards, and I imagine it would have been quite basic back then, but um, I couldn't stop playing it. So I put a couple of hours into this, and then eventually I thought, Jesus, I've got to go to bed. I think a 7 out of 10. Yet another arcade conversion from Sega. This one is easy to get into. The sound can become a little bit annoying. You control a submarine and the view that you can see on screen is your periscope up. This game would have been even better if you could have used those 3D glasses from the early 80s. As things stand, the 3D effects and trickery of the arcade are sadly missing and what you really get is a 2D experience. This is a fantastic little clone of Scramble from the arcade original. The scrolling is almost silky smooth, the graphics do their job, and with a couple of hours of practice, this one is actually beatable. It has to be said there's a few question marks over the hit collision detection. The enemy ground targets don't explode, they just disappear. And whilst it's a nice little shooter and a nice little arcade experience, there's only one difficulty level, so for me, a 7 out of 10. Super Cross Force is definitely one of those games that plays better than it looks. Enemy ships fire in two directions, up and down, which makes things especially tricky. If enemy fighters weren't bad enough, 
you have to watch your fuel levels as well. Levels are short, sharp and punchy, but there's also an option that's been cleverly added where you can fire diagonally across the screen, and that seriously ups the challenge. I've personally not experienced anything like it. There's a two-player option as well. I like it, it tried something new. I give this an 8 out of 10. I'm not entirely sure about this one. I think it came out quite late in the ColecoVision's life. You've basically got to protect the radar base down there on the right and ultimately yourself. The closer the enemy tank is to you when you take it out, the higher the score you get. I believe there's six scenes, uh, scenarios in total. I've only made it to four so far. As to what happens when you reach the final scene, I don't know. I quite like it, quite like the music. Uh, seven out of ten. Well, this is Time Pilot. I played this a whole bunch in the arcade. I'm a big fan of the ColecoVision version as well. Although, what the hell is that big massive doofa loofer of a sidebar doing on the left hand side? I'll forgive it though because this was way back in 1983. There's no question this is a good, faithful conversion. In fact, it's brilliant. If there is to be a drawback uh, against this game, and I'm probably nitpicking here, it's that you can't see the parachute guys on the later stages and some of the homing missiles, but a solid 8 out of 10. The best tennis game I've ever played is... Uh, it, it came out on the Atari 800 XL. I think it was a pack-in tennis game. That was absolutely brilliant. And then the next best tennis game I played after that would be Virtual Tennis on the Dreamcast. But this plays really well, and uh, I think I missed out. I would have liked to have played this back in the day. But I had this on the Amstrad CPC. I think it was called Match Point, and I didn't get on with it very well. But this plays a lot better. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. I've said before in a previous ColecoVision video that I did, so check that one out, that this is an absolute fantastic arcade conversion. It's got speed, it's got the graphics, it uses the steering wheel control, the animation of the building zipping past is fantastic as well. It just goes to show how powerful the ColecoVision as a console is. To me, it feels arcade perfect, and as a petrol head, a driving fan, it's an essential game. Drum roll, and without question, easily a 10 out of 10. Back in the day, my Amstrad CPC had a game called Roland on the Ropes. The ColecoVision's answer to that was Tutankhamun. If ever a game deserved the Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones title, it must definitely be a contender. I love this game, I can't get enough of it, but sadly I can complete it quite easily and I'm left wanting more. What earth were the programmers thinking? They had in the palm of their hands a winning formula. Unfortunately I'm going to have to give this one a 7 out of 10. Again, I've covered this one in a previous video. For me it's as good as the Commodore 64 version and it's not far behind the arcade original. If you love arcade thrills and excitement, you can't look any further than up and down. For those that have played it, you'll know it's anything but simple, even though it looks that way. The graphics and scroll look authentic, the music sounds brilliant, and this has got one hell of a challenge. It's reasons like this I've fallen in love with the ColecoVision, and the best is yet to come. Oh god yeah, a 9 out of 10 for this one. Come on Winky, you can do it. No, I can't. Yes, you can, Winky. You can do it. No, I can't. Of course you can. Come on. I can't. I'm just a fat, useless, hardly manoeuvrable blob. Good old Winky has found a tomb and he's got to collect all the treasure. Has anybody ever seen the arcade machine of this? In all seriousness, this is not an easy game. It looks simple, but there's a massive challenge here. Also, berserk anyone? There's four levels of difficulty and the music and sound are amazing. There's only one Mr. Winky. Has anybody noticed the reflection of this game, the cover of this game, where they're looking back and it's not the same image? That's a bit freaky. Thankfully, the game is scary, but in a different sort of way. This is loosely based on the fantastic movie from the 1980s. You've basically got to defend the United States from a nuclear attack. And on a system peppered with arcade conversions, it's nice to see something original. Without practice, the tension becomes unbearable. The graphics do their job, but it's the playability where this wins through. 
a 9 out of 10. Another game where you've got to defend the United States from a nuclear attack? Talk about lightning striking twice, but it's highly original. It's not too dissimilar to war games, but seeing a city light up in a plume of smoke looks great. I quite like this, it's really addictive to play. This is a really difficult game, but it's more of a survival game. It's a bit like Tetris, there's no way to win. I think the longest I've survived is about 35 minutes, and eventually, as you see in Missile Command, you lose all of your cities and it's game over. Easily 8 out of 10. I can't quite put my finger on it, but this reminds me of something that I played on a different system. The graphics and the locations look wonderful. The sprite's not so great. It comes across highly original. Our dragon has basically got to collect uh, lots of fire crystals. There's a giant enemy to the east of the cave. Collect enough fire crystals and only then might you have a chance of defeating the Guardian. If you defeat him, you get the diamond crystal and then you have to take it back. You can even collect eggs that give you extra lives. A solid 8 out of 10. Well, I promised I'd save the best till last and they don't come any better than this wonderful arcade conversion. This one is an essential game for your ColecoVision and I give this one a 10 out of 10. Sadly, we've reached the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, ring that bell, and please subscribe. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover on the ColecoVision, maybe newer games. And I'll just close by saying this is a fantastic, wonderful system I missed out. And until next time, bye!